Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner operator of Expertly Diet Art by Science, and today we are going to talk about how to make joins with the drop spindle. So, I know that I talked briefly about this in my Learn to Spin videos uh, with drop spindle. However, um, I just want to do like a focus study on joins specifically and do it a couple of times to really show you guys what it is that I'm doing and explain it a little bit more and I also wanted to show you how to do a join for an art yarn so um, it's going to be a, a double whammy here um, so here's my drop spindle and what I've done is I've really thinned out the ends here and it doesn't matter you know if you if your end is a lot thicker than this what really matters is how thick your yarn is so if you have a really thick yarn there, the end is going to be thicker but what you want the, but what you're trying to focus on here is making sure that the end is still a little bit thinner in thickness than the yarn that you're making because what you're going to do is you're going to overlap it with the end of whatever fiber you're using whether it's top or roving a bat you know you name it so um, this came from this piece of Falkland top please focus thank you so um, what I did is I just I found like a a spot here in the middle and I just poked a hole through with my thumb and then pulled it apart and then um, I drafted out the end so it's a little bit thinner so this is this is the undrafted end and this is the drafted end my husband pointed out that I that I definitely shake things a lot <laughs> when I want you to focus on something I'm not trying to you know <laughs> Gosh. he's just so funny I'm not trying to like shake my finger at you or anything I'm just I don't know. I talk a lot with my hands. Blame my mom. <laughs> anyway, so um, so I've done I've done this part here and here. Okay. Oh, and thank you, Katie, for counting how many times I said the word K in my last uh, Coruscant video. <laughs> Apparently, I said it 36 times. That's kind of a lot. So I'm trying to not say K all the time. Um, it's gonna be hard. I don't want to say it now. <laughs> All right. I have my end here. I have my end here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap it like so. And it's okay if it barely starts to grab up here. And you see I've pinched it in my hand. So, oh, let me get this apart here. So I have both pieces attached to this uh, uh, middle finger right here in the thumb. And that's just so that I make sure that the end, because I'm the end of the fiber is is going towards uh, this spun yarn. So I want to make sure that it doesn't get like kicked back or flipped up and sticks out of my yarn. I want it to lay flat. So I'm going to pinch it down with my finger while I'm organizing all this. And since um, this is probably going to be your first fiber or your first yarn, um, since by the time you get to the second or third skein of yarn, you've pretty much figured out how to do a join. Um, so really at that point, it's just making it nice and smooth so it just disappears. Um, all right, so we're going we're gonna to still do the park and draft method. So I'm going to give this some twists to let it build up a little bit. I'm going to park it under my armpit here because um, I don't want to put the camera at my knees. <laughs> all right. So here is the yarn, or here's the fiber, sorry. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pinch with my right hand, and I'm going to let the built-up twist travel up that yarn. And you see it's still overlapped here. I'm just going to pinch with the right hand and let go with my left, and that's going to let the twist that's been um, built up in the yarn travel up the fiber and cause it to twist to stay in place. Alright, I'm going to give it some more twist. And then I'm going, see, this is, this is, I don't know if you can really see that, but that is the end of the first or the last piece that I was using. Okay, and then I'm going to just do this little pinch to show you how um, relatively easy it is. And you almost you can't really see it that much. That little fluff, I don't know what that is. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Remember, we're learning. And, um, you know, this is probably just fiber stuck on it. 
because I, I when I was done with my last uh, spinning video, I just like wrapped this all up on itself and then put it in a bag for later use. Anyway, I'm gonna actually just draft this out a little bit. All right, so here we are. We've we've made the join, and then it's gonna add a little bit more twist, and then we're gonna walk it down onto the spindle again. I'm gonna do it one more time, I'm trying to get as close to the camera as possible for this next one, which might actually involve me getting up. Probably not. It, I, I probably won't need to. So we walked it down. I didn't have to do the butterfly method because I was able to maintain tension just by holding my arms out. Um, if it if it, if it exceeds your uh, arm span, you might want to do the butterfly walk down. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go see the other video I was just mentioning about learning to spin with a drop spindle. <laughs> um, all right, so let's pretend. Oh. All right, we're on. We need to do another join. So I'm going to build up the twist. And we're going to get nice and close, and that just means me bumping the table with my knee and sitting on my leg. All right, and don't mind all of the spinning wheels behind me. I don't really have a lot of space for them right now. I was I was watching Netflix and spinning. Anyway, all right. So here we go. We've got this area that we want to make the join. All right? You probably need an overlap of at least half the staple length for it to be stable. If it's anything less than that, it's not going to stay together and you'll really notice it, especially when you're um, either scanning it onto a chair or using a nitty knotty. It's going to draft apart in that spot and then you're going to get really sad because you're going to have like two mini skeins. I've been there, but you know. <laughs> Just be aware of it now so you can avoid heartache later. All right, so the, the thing to keep in mind for a nice smooth join is to keep wispy ends and draft them out a little bit so that when you overlap, the thickness that you have at the overlap point is going to be approximately the same as the, as the thickness of the yarn that you've already made. Okay? All right, so here we go. So just pull this out a little more so you can see this. All right? Take the fiber, overlap, pinch, and just let it draft. Normally I would, you know, run this down my leg to get a lot of momentum to build this up, but, you know, I'm sitting on one leg right now. <laughs> okay. I said K. Okay. Oh, man. And that's just twice. There's probably been eight times already by now. <laughs> eight minutes. Woo, really got to book it, okay? That one didn't count. <laughs> so, you can almost not even tell where I made that join. So, the rule of thumb is when you're making a join, don't be scared. Everyone has to make a join. All of those really great spinners that you might envy, I don't know, um, there's, a, there's a couple I have envied at my the spinning guild that I went, like I was a part of. Some of those spinners were absolutely amazing. Um, but everyone has to make joins when they're spinning. You, there's really no way around it. Um, so you just have to get used to doing it and become confident in doing it and really just Practicing with your first skein of yarn is going to make every subsequent skein even better because you won't have any of those little bumps where it's like, oh, that was probably a join. Um, so you make expert joins with your first skein of yarn, and then after that, you'll look you'll look like a professional. It's like you've been you've been spinning for 20 years, right? So, um, all right. That is how I like to do a join for just a plain, you know, relatively even yarn. And I have seen beginner yarn that looks a lot like this. So if you're trying and it's not working out, don't get frustrated. 15 minutes a day, set it down, go back and do it next time. And if you don't have 15 minutes a day, you need to have a talk. <laughs> Sounds like I'm threatening. <laughs> All right. So the next thing 
I'm going to show you, which is a lot more fun. Um, you don't have to master making a join in order to do this kind of join because, like I was saying earlier, you can have a really even first yarn, but more, more likely what's going to happen is you're going to have um, kind of a chunky yarn, sort of like this. Now, if you watched my bat spinning video, uh, making art yarn in a snap, you will have um, seen me make this yarn on uh, in that video. So it's probably going to be on the lumpy, bumpy, you know, thick and thin side, and that's totally okay. It's actually one of my favorite types of yarn. And it's hard to make this yarn after you've done the real nice, even, smooth yarns. I feel like I just need to let go and, and let the yarn happen. Um, but if you're a beginner and you're making yarn, you're going to make yarn this gorgeous. So I'm a little bit jealous. I actually have to work hard to do it. and You're just making it. <laughs> All right. So here we have um, this lovely bat that I carded up. This is the forest floor colorway that you can find at Darn Good Yarn. And um, basically, you just pull off a strip, which I showed you how to do in that other video. So if you want to know how, go to that video. And then um, I just drafted it out a little bit, just like I did for uh, the white Falkland. I used Falkland for that. Um, I drafted it out. And what I'm going to do is show you how to make a join when you're making a thick and thin yarn. Now, there's one or two things I want to say about thick and thin yarn. It's really just anything that's uneven. So you'll have thin spots and thick spots. That's that's basically the requirement for it. You can also have a single thick and thin yarn, and you can also have a plied thick and thin yarn. I mean, there's lots of ways you can just go with it. If you say thick and thin, it can mean actually a lot of things. Um, what I'm going to be talking about is a single, a thick and thin single. Um, since more than likely you're going to make your yarn, take it off, and then want to immediately start playing with it, I don't blame you. So um, what I'm going to do is show you how to make the join with the thick and thin yarn. And that was, that, that'll bring me to the second point. I knew it was going to be two points. <laughs> I don't know why I hedged. Anyway, so um, there's one way, which is to make long, thin spots, and then a thick spot, and then a long, thin spot, and then a thick spot. That will be a lot more dramatic in the finished yarn. Also, if you make thin, thick, thin, thick, just pretty regularly, as soon as you make a thin spot, you make a fat spot. That is um, also going to be dramatic in a different way. So um, I'm going to do the second type where you have thin and thick spots, which are basically one right after another. Um, so here we have this yarn. It's not super dramatic with the thick and thin spots, but this this little spot right here is thin, this little spot here is thick. If you can see that. I really hope it's focusing well. <laughs> if not, I'll have to do it again. Um, not a big deal. I'm, ha I'm happy to do these videos for you guys. All right, so let's say you're going to draft out a fat spot. So I'm going to hold this here, pinch, and then I'm going to let this thin spot sort of happen at the end, and then you have a thick spot in the middle. Ooh, focus. Got that thick spot in the middle. All right. So here we have our wispy ends. This is actually one of the times when the end just doesn't matter if it's a little bit on the on the fat side because you're making a artistic yarn. So I've got my my little wispy end, which I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick that at the tail end of the thin part. The tail end of the thin part, okay? And then I'm going to just draft out the new piece of bat or roving, and then I'm going to release and let that twist travel up. Get a little bit more spin here. Like I said, I don't want to be running this down my leg, but you know, it's under my armpit. So we're going to just pull this out, make another thin spot. Oh, that's a nice big fat piece. All right. So where I like to make the join is at the thin spot. 
And that, I mean, it makes sense for me because it's going to be the tightest spot because the, the twist is going to rest um, in the area of least resistance, and that's going to be where there's not a lot of fiber. This fat, this little fat guy, it's not going to have that much twist, actually. It's probably going to be like three twists per inch or something. It's, it's, it's very, very loose and poofy, which is what you want. But if you're going to make your join, you don't want to make it in this fat spot because what's going to happen is the ends are going to flip out. And then, um, you know, when you're skeining and washing and, you know, setting the twist, it's actually, it might cause that part to stick out. And that's exactly what you don't want. So I'm going to wrap this onto the drop spindle like that. And then I'm going to show you again how to do this join. And I am so long-winded. I am sorry. This is like 15 minutes already. But I had a lot of requests for this type of video. I'm just making this a little bit. I'm just making this a little bit longer so you, so you can see it on, on the camera. All right. So I have a thin spot here, and I want to make a fat spot. So I'm just going to pinch, and then I'm going to draft these fibers out until I make another thin spot right there. And I even captured some Angelina and some Poldsari silk. Lovely. And then you're just going to keep doing this. You're going to pinch and then hold as you let that twist travel up. Right? So the, the join for this is very minute. You won't even, I mean, if you are having a hard time making a join in general, doing it this way you're going to look like a master because it's so much it's so much easier to hide if you're having a hard time uh, getting it to be real smooth because it's okay if it's a little bit bumpy okay so let's just pretend oh we're gonna we're gonna add on some fiber right here right so this is this is already going to be on the little a little of the thin side and then this you're gonna draft this out or it's already gonna be a little bit on the thin side and you're just gonna overlap that here. So I'm going to pinch it with my fingers and then release. Ta da! So you have that little thin spot where you made the join. And no one is going to notice if you're not making a super smooth, low profile join because the fiber is going to have a, or the yarn is going to have a lot of texture with the thick and thin spots that it's going to be unnoticeable. All right. So that's where I made the join. And you really just you can't tell at all where I made that join. So, if you found this video useful, which I hope you did, and you were able to see everything, which I hope you were. <laughs> if you have any other questions, if you want to see something again, if you want me to explain other kinds of joins, um, please let me know and I will either do the necessary research to find out what what type you're talking about because I'm not a master spinner yet. I've only been doing this for about three years. So there's still a lot of stuff that I need to learn how to do. And if it means helping you out, I will certainly learn how to do it. And if it's something that I already know, I'm going to give it back to you guys. I'm not. It's not worth me holding on to it. It's, it's not worth the ransom. Um, I want there to be a lot more spinners in the world than just the few that currently exist. So if you want to pick up a spindle and learn how to do this stuff, I am more than willing to help you out with troubleshooting, giving you ideas, sort of thing. Anyway, so thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And I will have all those links to the videos I mentioned below. So if you're hopelessly lost, I will be able to hopefully get you in the right direction. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye!